million US dollars into the Amazon fund. As the name suggests, it's effectively a fund designed to protect the Amazon. Germany, Norway, one of the two biggest contributors to it. It was essentially frozen uh, in 2019 again because of controversies surrounding the former president of Brazil. But we understand that money will be put towards deforestation. And in doing so, we expect will provide some certainty, if you will, or some uh, new uh, surety uh, for European countries to get those Mikosa free trade talks back up and running. Trent Murray in Berlin, thank you for that update. Well, this visit comes as fresh talks have been taking place over a common currency for Brazil and Argentina. It's a plan that's been heavily criticised by some economists. Well, let's talk to journalist and author Richard Lapper, who's written the book Beef, Bible and Bullets, Brazil in the Age of Bolsonaro. Uh, welcome back to the programme, Richard. Good to see you. Uh, so uh, this is a three-country tour uh, from Chancellor Schultz, as we've been hearing. But all eyes have really been on his visit to Brazil, haven't they? Uh, why is it so significant, do you think? I think it's significant principally because of the Amazon. Um, Germany was one of the biggest supporters of the Amazon fund, uh, about $200 million in that fund, which has been frozen. Uh, actually, more than that, more like $400 million in that fund, been frozen since 2019 because Bolsonaro didn't like it, so it as, a, as, a, as a, the, 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 the sponsors were trying to get hold of the Amazon resources and, and breaching uh, Brazil's sovereignty. Now, that, has, that will uh, become operational again. Lula's made that very clear. The, elect, the newly elected president came in at the beginning of January. And as your correspondent points out, um, the Germans are going to give an extra $38 million. It's small at this point, but it's very important, very significant, because on the back of this, these kind of initiatives, Brazil is hoping to leverage an awful lot of international investment in sustainable and green industries. And the other thing is, of course, again, as your correspondent points out, that this can open up the Mercosur-EU uh, trade agreement that was signed back in 2019 and has been on ice, really, because national parliaments in Europe don't want, didn't want to approve it while, you know, the Amazon was being was was deteriorating while you know the the problem with bolsonaro was that you know not enough was done to stop deforestation and the the level of destruction uh, grew quite significantly during his presidency so the environment uh, obviously on the agenda uh, this potential trade deal but also uh, the war in ukraine uh, that's sort of been painted as a, as a uniting factor between the four countries but uh, brazil and its president not necessarily on the same page I think it's very double-edged. On the one hand, uh, Germany, as a big buyer of Russian gas, has obviously been trying to find additional new sources of energy. Um, Chile, Brazil, Argentina have ambitious plans to exploit their energy resources. There's a lot of interest in things uh, like the Argentine gas fields, the shale gas fields, uh, the Vaca Muerta, and there's also a lot of interest in green hydrogen. There's a lot of interest in Argentina and Chilean's lithium resources. But um, in, in terms of um, the, the, the war and the, the politics of the war, I think there is a, an issue here. I mean, Germany obviously is on the side of, of the Ukrainians. Brazil, uh, Brazil's position has been much more uh, ambiguous. Um, you know, Lula himself uh, has criticized, you know, the Western allies and NATO and says that they have got some responsibility for the war. So they don't see eye to eye on this issue. And I think that's also true of other left wing governments in Latin America, where they're much more, possibly the exception of Gabriel Boric in Chile, where there are, they're much more ambivalent about all this stuff. Uh, very much um, traditional old-fashioned leftism. Well, let's talk about this uh, idea of a common currency between Brazil and Argentina, uh, designed to rival the dollar. Uh, what do you make of it? Can it work? And what will it mean? Not, not very much. Um, <laughs> and I don't think it's going to happen for a very long time. And, and um, I mean, this has only this has really been blown up. I think. I mean, this is this is really a, a, a currency that. Uh, won't actually happen. I mean, no one's talking about replacing Brazil's real or the Argentine peso anytime 